So as I said earlier, we've been doing the 12 powers this year. This is our fourth Sunday. And April is the power of love. The power of love. And I want to read the intro to the 12 powers when the words that are written Verily I say unto you, you have followed, you that have followed me, in other words, not me, the physical, but me, the teachings, the word, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you, you also shall sit upon the twelve thrones. Thrones metaphysically means power. Those who set upon thrones are people of great authority and great power. Why would they tell us that we could sit on 12 thrones? People who read that, who are literalists, are going to see literal thrones, maybe of gold and, and jewels of all kinds. But I invite you to see it more from a spiritual perspective, that the throne is your power. And again, I want to encourage all of you, don't lose connection with your power. It is your inner innate power that's going to get you through this time that we are in today. So Charles Fillmore and Merle Fillmore, the founders of Unity, actually were the one that came up with this wonderful spiritual idea of the 12 powers as being connected to the 12 disciples that Jesus called out. Now that's important, to call out. You know what call out means? It means the, the called out ones. Or actually it's been translated the church. Now religion has taken its own idea of this idea of the church as meaning uh, great edifices and buildings where people gather, they go to church. And the language is kind of geared that way, but we've done our best to teach everyone here that the church is not the building, but the church is the people. The Greek word was ekklesia, when Jesus said to Peter, faith, I'm going to build my church. He says, I'm going to build people. I'm going to build consciousness. I'm going to build and develop people into a higher state of consciousness that is going to link to that consciousness that I bring to the earth called Christ. Christ is the consciousness, the universal consciousness of Creator arriving on planet Earth in this human third dimensional experience. So he called out Peter, for instance. Peter, follow me. That was faith. Let faith be the cornerstone of this building. And we learned how that faith is an innate ability. It's not a blind believe. Believe me because I said it. Believe it because you read it in a book. It is a knowing, a remembering that is innately within all of us that we have forgotten. It is a faith that is in the higher atmosphere of our mind. And when we allow ourselves to go through, through any kind of vibration, whether it's singing, playing bowls, tuning forks, intention, however you get there, it's fine with me, just get there. Get into the higher state of your mind where you find faith waiting for you. Faith that says, all things are already accomplished. Every answer to every prayer, every question that you have has been reserved in the high places of at the atmosphere of your mind called heaven. That's heaven. And now we've got to pray that heaven comes to earth and be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that all the creations and all the things that are done in the high places of the heavens of our atmosphere is ready to be manifested in the mundane every part of our life. This is powerful. So let me go through them real quickly. The 12 powers are faith, strength, wisdom, love, which is today, power itself, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, elimination, and life. These are the 12 powers. So let's look at love. 
I found it challenging when I first realized that love was the subject of today. I went, oh, that's an easy one. Because we all talk about love a lot. We say we love. And love's kind of a word that's just very prevalent in the spiritual community especially. But when I sat down to really begin to tune into this idea of love for the message today, I found it as difficult as trying to define God. I've always found it a difficulty to try to define something that is infinite, something that has no beginning and no end. Every time I try to label it, build a mental construct, I realize I'm putting into confinements and I want to know the infinite. And it takes the part of the infinite in me to know the infinite. For like is attracted to like, and like knows itself. So, let's look at the metaphysical meaning of love. Love is a divine attribute. It's not something we have. It does not say, God has love. And that's what we think of. We think of an old man in the sky, this God that has love for us. It doesn't say God has love. It says God is love. So that means when you say you have the presence within you, God within you, however you choose to call it, you're saying you have love in you already, that it's not a learned behavior, that it's something that has been given to you by divine attribute, by divine nature. And we have to learn how to tune in to that love. If we don't, then the ego is going to pick up and say, well, i got a version for you. And that's the thing the ego mind has. Always another way of looking at things rather than looking at it from spirit and reality. It can always take it and make it into its illusion, its image and likeness of itself. And then it puts its venom in, venom in which is, the, the, uh, the poison of it into the idea so that it can always bring us to the agenda of separation and oneness. And this is why I say to you, do not let what is going on right now at the greatest time of separation I've ever witnessed where we cannot be together within six feet of each other and all of that. I say, do it. we got to do what we got to do. But at the same time, do not let that win that that's the only way we can be together. Fortunately, we have the technology today to be with you through the Internet. But I'm not talking about that either. I'm talking about another coming together of purpose and mind, of spirit, Love is, is, love is a divine attribute. But everything, everything that is came from an, a divine idea. God is like a huge divine mind. A mind that had ideas. And the first idea that it had was of itself. The idea of the self. We call that self-realization. And there's nothing greater than to have the experience of self-realization. And I mean to truly know who you are. To see past the layers of labels, of cultural conditionings, and all of the layers of personality. And go beneath all of it to find the true authentic self waiting for you to call it forth. A part of that true self is what we call love. God had an idea, and the idea was this, an idea that I don't want to be alone. Stop and just imagine, just a moment, being what you call God. God meaning everything, omnipresent. Everything that is real. Put that all together and you have God. So imagine just a moment that you are love. God is love. But is that enough to be love? I've questioned this for 30 years. Because I want to know why, creator, did you create? How did you become a creator by your creation? 
Why'd you need to do it? If you're everything, if you're all love, if you're all joy, if you're all peace, if you're all light, why would you need to be anything else? What need would you have? And it came through to me from spirit that says, but you can be everything and have become nothing. Being and becoming what you are is two different things. I have had a lot of people, mostly women, who have come to me through the many years of ministry and want me to pray to, to bring a companion into their life. And you know what they'd say to me? Because I have all this love in me that I want to share and I want to give it with somebody. Why is it not enough to have the love in there if you have not anything to love? So when you bring vibration to love of being, the vibration is the becoming of love. So if God was all there was and there was nothing else, what could it do but to have something to love? But what's it going to create it out of? I know the old religious Bible story is God took some dirt and some dust and put it together and, and made a man out of it. That has nothing to do with creation. That has to do with formation through our evolutionary process. Had nothing to do with creation. Creation is a spiritual act. It is a spiritual coming from a God who is spirit. God created spirit. How do you create spirit if, if there's nothing but spirit? That means you have to extend yourself as spirit outside of yourself. The Kabbalah says that God needed a vessel. That is, creation is called the vessel. And he filled the vessel with itself. And in that moment, love began to vibrate and begin to move. This is why the Bible starts out, and God moved across the face of the deep. That word is fluttered or vibrated. Love, the noun, started vibrating to become the verb. And love became loving because it had something to love. At that moment, that was divine idea. And that idea is who you truly are at the deepest level. You, in your authenticity, as a spiritual created being, you are God's idea of itself. But what religion did not teach us is how for us to become. So we got stuck in the prison of the human experience. And the ego says, well, then I'll become. <laughs> In that space of the lack of the authenticity of the true self becoming what it is became a false self was made. A pseudo self. The manifestation of the ego itself. It's called many things. In its most rough place it's called the devil. It's called Satan. The man of sin. It is called uh, in psychological ego. It is called so many things. The Bible calls it a carnal mind. It is called so many different names. But it all is that part of us that did not allow who we truly are to become. And in that space the ego became. So what I'm saying to you, we, you are the manifestation of the pure love that God is, made manifest and extended. But unfortunately, that did not become, did not become the mind, the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and therefore did not make itself into the cellular level in which it became a physiology or a biology. Instead, those things became what imprisoned the authentic self. That's why Jesus went and preached to the spirits in prison. He went to the real you and said, hold on, but there will be a generation that will not walk as their forefathers. Psalm 78. I see a generation that was going to let the prisoner out and the real self is going to show up. And you know what religion calls that? The coming of Jesus. The coming of the Christ. The coming of the Christ is the coming of you. The real you coming and becoming all that it is. So, bottom line, it's not enough to be without becoming. 
who you are. And that's why when the teacher Jesus came along, he says, you know what, I'm going to be a way, I'm going to be a process, and I'm going to show you how to become who you truly are. That was his message. It wasn't a Christian message. It wasn't a religious message. It was a message of process of how who you've been created to be can become what it is all the way and feel every dimension of reality. The mental, the emotional, the thought, the feeling, the, the physical, everything. And I say that this is a time we need to set ourselves free. You say, now? A time in which I am stuck in my house, I can't see friends and family, I can't go shopping or where I want to be, and you're telling me be free? This is probably the greatest time is in this time of not being free as what ego has become is the opportunity for who you are to become now in this moment. I invite you, tune yourself to the real you. Listen to the real you. Listen to the dreams, through the meditations, through however it gets to you in some way. But you can't do it if you're going to be in fear and frustration and anger uh, uh, and disappointment and, and, and to be and trying to figure it all out all the time. That's what the ego wants you to do because that's your blockage from you becoming who and what you are. You are love. Become love. And I thought, boy, what a horrible time to be preaching a message on love. I bet there's nobody out there feeling like much love right now. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a transcendence of love. Love is a divine attribute. God is love. Love is God. It is a quality that's in all of us. 1 John 4 and 8. He who does not, uh, he who does not love does not know God. Wow. He, she, who does not love, does not know God. For God is love. Now the difference between divine love and human love is that divine love is broad and unlimited. A universal and harmonizing power. Hmm. Human love is based on personality and is selfish, lawless, and conditional. Divine love will establish one in fearlessness and in courage. Now our experience with love in this dimension has been more conditional than not, whether we want to admit it or not. We love for reasons. <laughs> we love because we have this ego's version that I call falling in love. And I keep asking people who say to me, oh, I've met somebody and I just immediately fell in love. I say, why do you want to fall? Love is not a reason to fall. And what are you falling into? The trap of ego. Of course, a miracle calls this a difference in holy love and special love. So just be careful of special love. When you start making someone separate now, it doesn't mean we don't have unique experiences with people at many levels of love. Like that one that you find that there is truly a connection and you love as your partner, your significant other, husband, wife, whatever you choose to call it. That's a very unique love, that you, a degree of love that you find. But even that can change on a dime. <laughs> How many people have thought they have found the love of their life and within six months, a year, it all had turned and changed completely. That's human love for you. Divine love is established. It is always there. It is the consistency of higher consciousness. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. I think that would make that my mantra, if I was you. It's in 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given me the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I read it's uh, something around 60% of people are dealing with depression and anxiety right now over this, growing every day. And if people aren't careful what they're going to go to, is they're going to go to the refrigerator, they're going to go to find some drugs, they're going to find something out here to try to fill that place in them when it's an opportunity to be filled with what's already in us, the attribute of love flooding and filling our whole inner being, even to the point of surprising ourselves. Now, I have not tapped into a huge amount of love. And in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that was a Freudian slip, but I hope not. Uh, of fear. I have just not felt a lot of huge fear. Um, and maybe I'm fortunate in the sense that I uh, have a business that's run from my home and that we're kind of home body people, and I'm not out there all the time running around to things, you know. Uh, so it's not been that huge of an adjustment at this point uh, for us. But uh, I, I do want to say that people out there who are losing jobs and going through what they're going is going to uh, go through a terrible time in which if they choose fear, it's going to become the dis-ease that's going to show up later as a disease. I ask us please not to do that, but to ask the help of divine mind, Holy Spirit, whatever you choose, to realize that you can choose differently. You can choose differently. Such as seeing this as a problem and seeing it as an opportunity are two different ways in which we can do it. We develop love where? In our heart, not in our head. So the word love is not love. It's language. It's mental language in the head. And the ego says, oh, you can talk about love all you want to. You can have the thought of love, just don't experience love. So love has become a more mental construct that we kind of throw around based on how conditions are. Let us all who have experienced this wonderful love coming through us that has been a love that maybe would not, we would not even have chosen if we would have been using our mental or human faculties. I find that with a lot of people who end up together and have a wonderful love relationship that usually it's not always their fantasy person. It's not the person that's built like they really fantasize about, but it's so transcendent of the limited condition of the physical body that it's a love based upon maybe a contract, unresolved issues that brought people back together, or the fact that two people have entered a frequency match in which they can be better together as becoming light workers for the planet. This is the kind of love that is stable is not the love that is built on the condition that changes our perception as our body changes. <laughs> you got to love. Love just is. So we develop this in our heart by asking daily that the infinite love of Mother, Father, God be manifest in us through us. Ask it every day. Ask it more times than you can ever think to do. Ask the Holy Spirit Remind me in this moment to ask for infinite love from the Mother, Father, God to manifest in me now in this moment. When you do that and love shows up, it's like turning the light switch on out of the darkness. And you'll be in the light of the Spirit in that way. The development of divine love has its place in demonstrating supply. In other words, this love will send forth the essence of itself to rearrange whatever we need and desire in the world. It's your supply. When love is established in consciousness, it will draw law of attraction to us all that we require to make us happy and content. We'll read that again. When love is established, has love been established? 
You that have said in the teachings of new thought and metaphysics and spirituality, you've heard of love, 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 we've all loved. Is it established at this time or where to go? If you were all here and we were having our meet and greet and all the hugging you people love to do and how wonderful that is, where'd it go? Because our bodies aren't here, love has diminished? Absolutely not. Love is as real in this moment wherever we all are in location. Love is transcendent of time, space, or location. So it says when love is established, it will draw the law of attraction to us all that we require. All the toilet paper you need. All the food, everything that you need, a new job, a new way of making a living. All of these things are going to show up because love is the energy, the blueprint that's going to put all that together and rearrange the molecular structures of matter. (laughs) thank you Gail (laughs) Philippians 4 and 11 I like this not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned in whatever state I am therefore to be content now you say I can't be in total bliss and happiness over this but can you find a place of contentment meaning I don't get it. It doesn't feel good. I don't like the way it looks. It stinks. It doesn't taste right. You know, go through all your five senses, and there, you're not going to get a, a good mark from any of them of how things look uh, and, and seem uh, at all through the five senses. But it says that through all of that, you can find a contentment in knowing that all things do work together for the highest good. Keep that in mind, that there's nothing that is not happening, that God can't take care of. 1 John 4.20, If any man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is not in truth. Mm. If a man or woman say, I love God and hate his brother, listen to me now because we've all been challenged with that one, a bunch of us. Be careful not to hate people. You may not agree and dislike the things that they do and the things that they say, but that's not who they are. That's what they do. That's what they become. That's ego becoming. And it tries to come back on you and say, now you have permission to hate. And where's the, where does the ego project on for its illusions? The body. So you start hating the body. And it's the same way with love. Be careful of only loving the body. Because loving the body can turn to hating the body. But when it's divine love, it is transcendent of that. I'm just about through here. Here's the words for love to show you all the different levels of love. Eros, that's romantic, passionate love. That's that something that you get from your second chakra. Somebody that makes your juices flow and you become very sexually attracted to someone. That's around. And nothing wrong with that when it's when it is when when true divine love is coming through that, it's a good thing. You can have a wonderful intimacy and experience with somebody. But if you do that separately, then allowing true love to become this relationship, and you make a relationship built upon the sinking sand of your own perceptions of what a relationship is that you think you want. People always think they know what they want. Next is philia. This is an intimate, authentic friendship. That's the ones you feel so close to that you trust, that you know they're authentic. They're not wanting something from you, but they want to be at a deeper level of intimacy that's authentic and real. Ludus, L-U-D-U-S, is playful, flirtatious. Who doesn't like to be with people that's fun, that you can play with and even flirt a little bit, but don't mean anything beyond that. There's just something there. There is 
storage in Greek, which is instinctual affectionate as a parent to a child. We can say we love our pet, we love our child, we love our husband, we love our wife. That's, that's different ways that love shows up. But again, if divine level of love is showing up as romantic passionate, that's a good thing. It'll be a good experience. If it's showing up in your authentic friendships, that's a good thing. And if it's showing up as playful and a little flirtatious, that's a good thing. It's not going to hurt anybody. If it's coming as a way you love your child, that is a certain frequency within itself that most of us know who are parents and have a love of child. I just throw in your pet too because I think people love their pets. <laughs> Next is philatuya, self-love. Self-love. Now self-love is on two levels here. You've got a healthy and you've got an unhealthy. The unhealthy is the ego's version of self-love which is narcissism, to be narcissistic. And I call that self-centered. But the other side of this self-love is to be centered in self. Do you hear the difference? Self-centered is, is ego, but to be centered in the true self is spirit. So center yourself in the, in the authentic self that you are rather being self-centered which is the result of becoming nar narcissistic and full of ego. And finally, the greatest of all is agape which is em empathic, universal or what we call God. The agape love. That is a love that says, I'm here to support your path, your human experience, your choices without judgment of any kind. I see you for who you are, and I see you for who you're becoming. I see you as you do the part of the process that has to do with the undoing and the letting go of all the attributes of who you thought you were being diminished by the coming and the presence of who you truly are in this moment. What an opportunity for us to take this precious time that has been given us to stop us in our tracks because we would not, what we're, what we're doing now we would have never done if things would have continued the way it was going. It took something huge, big. It took something that wasn't them and us but something that tied us all together. I wish love and peace would have been the thing, but it doesn't happen in this realm and dimension. It takes tragedy. It takes uh, hurt. It takes all these things. But don't think God can't use those things. Spirit can use those things that unite us for its own purpose and pleasure. So today we call forth the power of love. John John is pink. That's why I have my pink tie on. It is the color pink today. Pink is a beautiful color. It's also the color of a new chakra that is showing up between the throat and the heart. It's kind of a pinkish color for a new healing chakra that is showing up. So pink is a powerful color that takes a man to wear pink. Certain kind of man. Let's pray. Divine Holy Spirit, Mother, Father, God, let these words be taken into our hearts and given to the light. And the light shall become conscious and we shall experience enlightenment at that moment. Don't let these just be words that pass by and through our brain and through our mental faculty. Let it be something that each and every one of us can take from this time together this morning. 
to take into our life and let it become. The next time that fear comes, let love become. The next time that anger comes, let peace that passes understanding come. The next time that we feel anxiety, let that serenity and calmness come. The next time we feel a sickness or illness, let health come. Let it become. Until we are a new creation in you. Bless those, again, who are with us. Bless them in their home. Bless their families, loved ones. Guide us. We need your leadership as we move through this uncharted territory of new potentials that are awaiting us. We thank you and ask it to be done and know it is. And so it is. Amen.